What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Python tutorial and today I'm gonna show you how you can build a tool that will check the prices for your favorite products on Amazon and uh, it checks the prices on multiple Amazon stores um, basically I I'm in Europe so I can buy from uh, France, Germany, Italy, UK, Spain um, all those Amazon stores but this also works for the US uh, Amazon.com. This is a follow-up on an article that I wrote on Medium. If there's any um, any part of the video that's not clear, maybe it helps if you check the article. I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, just as a teaser, uh, I'll show you. I have this this uh, this code set up to run daily, so I have um, daily prices basically for for my articles. From my products, and this example is from a from a drone, a Mavic Pro, and check this out. On these three days, the price dropped 50%. I didn't actually buy it. Um, I'm not really looking to buy it. I'm just uh, it's just on my wish list. Um, but it's it's really cool. Um, I could have had 50% uh, discount here. Just so you can understand what's going on here, this is the search history file, so th th it, there's going to be a file that I keep all the prices that I scrape, so um, you're going to see what I mean. And uh, if you're into web scraping, <coughs> I'm glad I can show you some other articles about web scraping um, on Instagram. Uh, da -da -da -da. Also uh, with um, flight prices. Uh, both Instagram, both the Instagram bot and this flight um, flight scraper use Selenium, which is a different tool than the one we're going to use today, which is Beautiful Soup. But it's also nice for for web scraping if you have a website with a bunch of um, uh, buttons that you have to click in order to see some information. Um, so JavaScript essentially, and I also have one that uses beautiful soup yeah uh, this this one is about um, web scraping some uh, real estate prices and uh, I think I, I go in you know I go into a little more detail regarding the, the beautiful soup and how it works uh, the find and select elements on the page um, so I'll leave a link in the description and let me know if you still have any questions about the, the code, um, about uh, any part of the, of, the, of the video, let me know in the comments, uh, comment the video, comment the article, anywhere. Um, if you ask nicely, chances are I'm going to help you. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive into the project, I think it's enough intro, yeah. I have a folder for this project and you can see the py file here already but we're using this notebook so the notebook that we're going to look at is placed in the same folder as any other project so your your folders should match this this structure if they don't um, please make sure you update uh, the read csv file, um, parts here just update the, the folder uh, so we have a notebook, the py file, and we have the trackers, search history. So we're going to look at the trackers first. So if you have a look, I have a bunch of URLs from different stores. So Spain, uh, Germany, France, uh, from the US too. It works for, uh, for US, for the US Amazon store. Um, yeah, those are the, the different countries I have. And as you can see, so this is a camera, this is a PS4, um, a drone. So I have a lot of items that I would like to, to buy. I want to receive an alert or I want to know when the price drops below this level. So for these products, you have a link. This is a code that you can, you can create it yourself. It's just so you understand. Uh, this will be the ID for the, for the link. Okay, so you know this is a camera. A Nikon camera from the Spanish store and this is a threshold that you want to buy. So what do we need to start? Um, this is the, the imports. We're gonna need the requests. We're gonna use 
this one for the file names uh, glob beautiful soup pandas uh, date time and sleep because usually when you scrape um, you don't want to send a lot of requests at the same time to the server otherwise you can get um, locked out and you won't be able to scrape anymore so it's good practice to um, have a sleep between requests usually for stuff this simple you could just have like five seconds between scrape it's more than enough you should be safe um, we also have the the headers this is explained a little uh, a little bit further in the, in the article but essentially this is the ID card for your requests module <laughs> this is straightforward so and now we're gonna start with importing uh, the file the tracker product yeah, you you will need this file like the first time I'm sure you have an article or two in mind you can start with just one uh, you don't need to fill everything you can start with one or two um, and you can add more as you go along that's essentially what I did so let's import this nothing um, nothing complicated here just a CSV file and on the second line I'm extracting just the URLs so just this column here and here's the, the data frame so same as our CSV file so okay moving on I'm gonna check so I'm gonna pick up the, the first first URL here and I'm going to show you how you can pick up different parts of the um, of the product so this is the first URL here so let's copy this so this is the this is our link as you can see really nice camera a bit expensive though okay so right click anywhere on the web page and you get this weird looking structure here so this is this is the HTML uh, for the page okay so the whole page is on this right column under an HTML structure you're gonna search for a span with the ID product title to get the title um, I have so many stuff uh, here this one is also important you just right click and it it, it gives you the um, where it is in the HTML structure so you know this span is class uh, a size, medium, color, state, whatever. This is, um, this is so you can understand where, uh, how do you select the, the bits that you want to, to import from, from the website. I can actually show you. So we have a page and the page has a response to 100 which means it's okay if you get uh, 403 401 uh, well, I don't remember the other codes but yeah if you don't have 200 it means your request was not okay if it's 200 it's good and the way you can see it is if you do this page content wow it's it's a mess so this is the web page but in a very very dirty format um, Believe it or not, there's HTML here. Span, span A, span. well. So, this is not very helpful. We need to have some sort of structure here. And that's where Beautiful Soup comes into play. So, I'm gonna create a variable called soup, which is going to be the same page, but organized. And we're calling Beautiful Soup, and we give it page.content so the, the thing that I just showed you I'm not gonna go into much detail but uh, think of this like uh, the dictionary that you want beautiful soup to use to decode this page content okay 
let's see what it does. Yeah, so it's HTML doc type. It's really, really uh, different. Well, this part is still the same, but well, it's a big. Okay, this is definitely more organized. Okay, I'm gonna try and get the title. The way beautiful soup helps you is this. So, I want the title. The title is going to be our soup, and we're gonna try and find. So, this is a method from uh, beautiful soup. We're gonna try and find any tag with an ID product title. Okay, and let's actually do this. Whoops like this. Okay, this is this is the, the simple command. soup.find anything with a product title. Cool. We find the span that contains the product title. Just like here. But this is still not perfect. So Another method that we can use is the get text. Okay, it's better. And the other one is the strip. So it will strip all these weird characters from the from the field that we got. Nice, you got the title. And just so you know, I'm not tricking you, it's the same title. Moving on to the price. Um, as you can see, things are getting a little complicated here. But no worries, I'm going to show you. So let's see, this part, you already know what it is. Uh, let me start here. So soup find price block our price. So we have our price here, but there is some, some stuff that we need to get rid of. So we need to get rid of this, we need to get rid of this and replace with a dot. Um, that's different for, well, system and the website. Um, and we need to take care of the euro and this weird space here. Okay, so we can get can get text. Uh, now it's you see it, it removed all the HTML thing or all the span class whatever. So we re so we remove that and we're going to replace a bunch of stuff. Okay, it's starting to look better. Now there's only this weird character here that we need to replace. I mean, not replace, we need to get rid of. And we have a number. Actually, it's a string, we just need to put. And it's a number now. Okay, so now we have the price. Okay, and this is the part where I give you a really nice tip um, to in order to select in order to get the CSS selector in order to get this which works really well I have an extension a uh, Chrome extension I'm not sure it's in other browsers but maybe it's called selector gadget uh, I learned about this tool not too long ago and it's it's really useful I'm gonna show you how I use it so you click on it and um, let's say I wanted to get this uh, subcategory or whatever I left click and there's a bunch of yellow boxes that show up here and there's this um, this is this, the selector it will give you the selector but if I, if I choose right now I will get these four boxes and I just want this one. So I'm gonna middle click 
middle click, voila, click with the middle mouse button or the right button also works and it turned red so it's not going to show up and at the same time um, it will tell you a code here this will be your selector it is more efficient than trying to get the CSS from um, from the inspect and let's let me just quickly demonstrate suit.select uh, get text whoops okay this happens a lot uh, a lot so this is a list okay so you need the first element of the list okay and now you can have to get text get text and then you can put the strip okay cool we have the subcategory okay I hope I hope this is useful for you because it, it, it was really useful for me this uh, this part because sometimes um, the web page changes a little um, the structure it doesn't need to change a lot like if it changes from one uh, hierarchy level to the other and you're looking for the seventh div or the fifth div and it changes it messes the whole thing um, I found that this is way more robust and um, yeah it's, it's cool I hope you like it selector gadget it's a nice name here and to finish, you just click again. Well, after this amazing tip, uh, I think it's a good time to ask you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, and let me know if you like the tool. Let me know if you like uh, Selector Gadget. Okay, so I think that's enough examples. Uh, you can see I'm going to run this cell, the review count, uh, this review. And the item is actually out of stock today. Um, so bad luck um, okay so you see how it works how the select works how the find works I think you have a basic understanding of what what's going on here so this file I'm gonna show you um, I'm gonna show you running in different window but uh, it's essentially the code that I've showed you before I even spent some time uh, doing this description, trying to make it clear. Um, product tracker import CSV file. So there's a, some different things that I had to, to add to. Um, I'll, I'll show you what it is. But like the date time, so I know when the products were scraped. Um, there's while loops, for loops. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here that um, one way or the other it, it all goes back to what I, I showed you before we're getting the price we're going review score review count if it's a, a little more complex than what you see up there uh, it's because I had to make some changes to make the to make the, the code a, a little more robust and if you if you're wondering why so many try and accept um, statements, uh, sometimes some products have different um, information in the fields and there's no price or there's no reviews. Or, so I have to make some kind of uh, alternative if, if it doesn't find so, so the script doesn't crash. And checking if the product is out of stock. And then in the end, so this is the new stuff. For each link, so this is the loop, uh, this is for each URL in the product tracker's URL, okay? So we're in a loop inside each link. When it gets to the bottom, when it gets to the last part of, of the link, it creates a simple data frame with, um, with what we scraped, okay? In this part, you can have uh, an alert system. I was going to 
put some sort of uh, email alert. But since I've been home most of the time lately, I usually actually see the code running and I see if there's any alert. So it works fine like this. Um, in the article about the flight scraping, I have uh, an email alert for the for the prices. So if you want to check that article and adapt that part to put it here, you're, I think it's, it's useful. I'm probably going to do that uh, after. And we have another except, um, because sometimes I explain here. Sometimes we don't have a price, and if I do this comparison every time, in every product, it can crash. So, another try and accept. Again, maybe it's not the most efficient way. If if you have a more efficient way to do all this bunch of try and accept, I would actually appreciate if you um, comment the video or the article, any anything. Um, but I find that this is uh, it's working fine. And um, the tracker log. So we're going to have a tracker log that will append every article. So whenever it finishes, it goes to the tracker log and it appends the log. So the, the product information, it's another row. And I probably can show you... I'll show you the search history after. Let me just get this out of the way. So the tracker log, it appends the product. Uh, it's this message saying it appended the product and the interval. Uh, so the function works. The function has the intervals. I can I can make the function run for several intervals with several intervals with um, hours in between. That's that's how it works. I don't usually I don't have more than one interval. When I want to scrape, I just run the, the run the function and it's uh, one time only. But if you wanted to put it on a server and you wanted to, to have like run from time to time, I don't know. It's it's up to you. It works with just one and it will scrape only once and it will stop. Um, okay, print end of interval. That's just an information and. Yeah, after the run, um, we want to search our history records and we want to append this run to, to the results, right? We want to append the tracker log, which has all the logs for all the products, and we want to append it to our records. And our records are here on the search history folder. Still, we're looking at this notebook. And on this folder, you have a bunch of search records. Just FYI, the first time you run this, uh, I mentioned this in the article, but first time you run, um, you're going to want to have a empty file with this, with these headers. Okay, just so it has one file to open and append something to. And um, the way this goes, so this is getting me the file names of all the Excel files on that folder. And then I want the last one alphabetically. So this will give you the path to the file, the last file in the folder, um, which makes sense. We, we want to append our most recent scrape to the last uh, search history. And the search history files have the records from the file before and the current scrape. And then we get the, we get the file name so it's easy to read. Search history, it's a PD, read Excel, last search, and it reads the file. Great. And then we just append our latest prices. And we need to, to save a new file. Uh, this closes the loop, so we save another file with the, the date from now, the one that we had up there. Um, index false, end of search, and this is the end of the of the function. Okay, we've seen the code. Uh, I showed you what the code is doing with this uh, notebook file, and we're here in a, in a folder in the project folder, and you have the Python file as well, uh, the folders, uh, search history, and the trackers. And um, 
now you're probably wondering, okay, how can I actually use this? Um, and there's a couple of ways you can do it. I have my Windows scheduler uh, running this file every day. Um, so you, you can actually run it also by itself. So if I double click, it will start the, the program. And in this window, you can see it's already starting the first product, the second one, and it will go over the list on my trackers, uh, trackers file. It will scrape all the information from the products and it will return to the search history file. And I'll leave it running until the end and I'll come back. And the function is finished, so it, it closed the window, that's, that's supposed to happen. Um, now we can see what's going on in the search history file. So it was just now. Uh, this is the last file. Let's save just now and we can see we have all the dates since the start until the end. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you very much. I hope it was clear. Uh, I hope you can actually use it and save some money in the end. Let me know if you do in the comments. Uh, that would be awesome to have uh, that kind of feedback. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to keep the algorithm happy and obviously to keep me creating some content. Make sure you also check the links in the description. There's some useful information there. There's the, the GitHub repository for, for these files and a bunch of other resources that I may have forgotten to mention in the video. Um, have a great day wherever you are. Thank you for watching and I see you on the next video.